Welcome everyone. How you doing? My name is Marquesa Petway. I'm a business reinvention expert out of New York City. And I teach speakerpreneurs, these are entrepreneurs who use speaking to grow their business, how to create six figure signature systems. I call it the money maker of your business. And I'm also a proud columnist for Speaker Magazine. My column is called The Speaker's Toolkit. And this is where I interview some of the most successful speakers in the world. Guys, they share their best strategies and practices for success in their business as a speakerpreneur. I love this, and I call this work no way. Well, today, I have someone that every single one of us needs to hear from and meet. Who am I talking about? Her name is Valda Ford. She has been a member of the National Speakers Association as well as a professional speaker for 10 years. Now she's a registered nurse and educator, and at one point she was a diversity expert. But are you sitting down right now? Guess what she talks about now, y'all? Yep, you, you thought it really well, or maybe you didn't. Sex! <laughs> I can't believe I'm saying this. <laughs> but she talks about sex. And um, her really busy Facebook page, which is what this is all about, is called Sex is Not for Sissies, where great sex and safe sex comes together. Don't worry. She may tell you a little bit about sex, but the purpose of this interview is because, guys, it took her two years, two years to get 800 likes on her fan page. Guess how many she has now? Let me just make sure I get this right. Correct me if I'm wrong, Valda. 264,000. And guys, this is not a fluke. Every time she sends something out, she gets more than about, she gets thousands of comments, likes, folks are engaged. This woman is, I guess what you'd call a success <laughs> for sure. So she has agreed to share with us the how of it all. So welcome to the Speakerpreneur Show with Marquesa. <laughs> well, thank you so much. It's my pleasure to be here. All right, so give it to us. First of all, sex. What, how, how did this happen? How did you become a sex expert? Well, the interesting thing is being a minister's kid, I can tell you I never had it in my wildest dreams to be talking about sex 24 hours a day, seven days a week, which is almost literal. But as a registered nurse and as a diversity expert, after having spent about 20 years working in different countries, about 40 different countries, and being very comfortable with how to get people to talk about sensitive topics or culturally different topics, I was approached by a county government to help them look at their STD numbers. I mean, they really had terrible STD numbers and no one was talking about it. They were just saying, what, how could that possibly be? We don't do those things. Our kids don't do those things. But they had the eighth worst chlamydia rate and the 12th worst gonorrhea rate in the country. So I talked to them about strategies. I'm also, I have a master's of public health. So I look at population-based strategies to change things. And I was sent in to do the difficult conversation. And as I was doing that, I talked to parents to say, please don't take your kids out of these classes. I've learned all these great strategies. And as I would talk to parents, they would say, what? What are you talking about? My kid wouldn't do that. Oh, I don't have to worry about that. I don't have to worry about him. But over time, they started to realize that, like so many of us who did not get any adequate or effective sex education, they didn't know enough to really keep their children safe. So I made it my business to talk to the parents. So I want to talk to grown people. I want to tell grown people how they need to talk to their kids and how to have great and satisfying sex lives. And that it became that. It didn't start off to be that. I never, ever, ever, ever would have thought that. But it became that. And it has been amazing and successful. Oh, I love this. This is fantastic. So I know you guys are thinking, well, no wonder she has all of these likes. But Valda, you will say that you've been you've had sex for it's not for six sissies for a long time. That's but right. Recently, um, you know, you've been able to really take it up to the next level, which means it required work. So you want to kind of go into uh, when you were sitting with 800, what shifted for you? And I know it was a few things, but what's one of the things that shifted for you that got you from 800 uh, fans on your fan page to 
more than a quarter of a million. I know. I my goal originally was to get to a thousand. I'd heard somewhere that the way the algorithm works for Facebook would change once I hit a thousand, and it did. But what I did to get there was simple. One thing I asked people to like my page. I used ads, and the ads I didn't put a lot of money in them. Some people put tons of money. I just put a few dollars a day, so that it went through all sorts of different people's timelines. And then I originally started off with just anybody who spoke English. So I did US, UK, Canada, Australia, and New Zealand. Those are the ones that came to me at first. And I started getting more and more. I would get a couple hundred likes a day. And I was like, oh, <laughs> I like this a lot. But the reason why was because I responded to every, every person who came on, at least to give them a like or to give them a comment. And I think that personal touch, especially in the beginning, is what made it happen. Because previous to that, I was paying someone to run my social media page. They were putting out wonderful posts. I would help select them, but I wasn't engaging them. So once I started saying thank you, as a matter of fact, at first I said thank you to everyone who commented. And I think that not only do we want education from Facebook, we want to be acknowledged for being there. So I love that. So we heard a few different things there. One was call to action. Ask people for the like. Don't assume that they're just going to give you a like. And also you did sponsored opportunities. You did some that were uh, bumps. Or what do they call those? Boosted? Boost, yeah. And then some of them that were just straight out ads. Right. But here's the question that folks may want to know. Was your only call to action to like? Did you share a tip or was there a picture or did you send them to a website? Like what, was there just that call to action or was there a different call to action or an additional call to action? At first I just wanted them to like my Facebook page. But because I do my own events, some ads I send out to send them directly to my event site so that they would register now. And there were those times when I would ask them a question like, what was the most ridiculous sex education advice you ever got? And I will give away a free copy of my book to the person who gives me the most absurd advice that they got. And let me tell you, that broke the door open. And, and it wasn't even so much for the book, but people saying, oh my goodness, I was told that too. Or my grandma said, drink lemon water and you won't get pregnant or something silly like that. <laughs> Stand up in the pool when you, you know, and then you don't have to worry. So, yeah, I, I got them involved and I, I found that edutainment model was what they were looking for because people on Facebook want to be entertained. Mm -hmm. And I was told that I wouldn't meet my target market being typically 30 to 60 because that group is not interested in Facebook, that I needed to do Twitter and Instagram and all those. But that is not necessarily true. I you know, I don't do the rest of them well. I have it so that each one of my Facebook posts becomes a Twitter post as well. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I do that whole thing through Hootsuite where I have everything working and I don't have to multitask that. But just talk to them. And especially people think that it's because of sex, but it's not. It's because of interaction. It's because of communication. It is because... I don't allow people to be rude on my page. You know, a lot of people have these very sensationalistic pages, some movie stars and actors, and other people have these very sensationalistic pages where everything is about blah, blah, melee, nastiness. And I said, no, you can't do that. You can't speak that way. You have to get off the page. So they treat each other well. Every once in a while, there's some corny stuff going on. But in general, it's, it's really interesting and they treat each other well. No, I love it. So engagement, and then ask the most out of the box questions. Acknowledge your fans. Mm -hmm. Now, right now, video is becoming really hot. Um, you know, you can, and I believe, if I'm correct, on the fan pages, you have to be verified to do the live video. I don't know if they've changed it. I can't keep up because they do something every single week. But is it true? And on your fan page, not the groups, but on your fan page. Can anyone do live video or do you have to be verified to do live video on your fan page? On the page that I use, I'm the only one who puts a video and I do Facebook Live or my own so that they can make sure that I'm not pulling anything from a copyrighted 
issue. I was working with someone earlier today who was trying to pull his video from YouTube and they wouldn't let it go up gotcha. as an ad. They might have let it go up as a link because I do that all the time, but not as an ad because they weren't sure of the copyright. Mm -hmm. But I can do Facebook Live and it works beautifully. That just started to happen though. It wasn't happening a month ago, but now it's happening. But I don't have any problems with video. Good, good. So I'm also hearing ads, and then a lot of speakers are thinking about ads. It's funny because I see my fellow NSA members doing ads, and I hear okay results, but I mean, your results sounds to me like ads, engagement, really finding what your audience cared about is what really grew your results. Yeah, yeah also with the ads, you have to pay attention to the metrics. So the good thing about Facebook ads is that you can go in and you can create your audience. You can target specifically to a geographic area or an age or what kind of like. So I went to the other related interests were people who look at Dr. Oz and Oprah and Dr. Ruth and all those, Dr. Lauren Bernstein. So people who are either sex education people or advice columnists. And I got them paying attention to me but the other thing about the ads, you can go into Facebook where they have free Shutterstock photos. And we know how much it costs to use those photographs from, from Shutterstock. It can be a lot. But when you create an ad, even if you're paying out a dollar, you, have, you can go in and put in, uh, I can put in relationship or I can put in love or one of those keywords. And then I'll get just a massive number of photos to choose from. And then I'll put six photos in my ad because it allows you to cycle them through. Mm -hmm. Then I look back at my metrics to see which picture was the one that was most inviting to the group. So do I put a picture of sexy lips or of a couple looking at each other or people sitting looking at the moonlight or an older couple holding hands? What is it that's most engaging? And then when I see that, then I start to make more of my ads to look like that. But I just put that on and let it run $3 a day. And I'm getting in anywhere from 500 to 1,000 likes, new likes a day. Wow, guys, did you hear that? That's huge. Oh, my goodness. So I love this because uh, you gave us an exact technique on how you're getting these fans. Now, of course, we want to know, are you taking some of these fans off Facebook? and monetizing it. So two questions, are you taking them off, converting them off Facebook so they can become really a part of the Valda Ford community? And if so, how, what's your strategy for doing that, if at all? And then the second one would be, um, you know, how are you monetizing this just with having, it's wonderful having all these likes, but how is that showing up in your speaking business? Number one, taking them off the Facebook. I bring them to Facebook. I tried a number of different ads. One with trying to get people to go directly to my website, which is also Sex is Not for Sissies. That didn't work as well because I'm not as involved with it. The second way is to bring them straight to the Facebook page and keep them there. And the third way is to take them to my event sites if I have something going on specifically. And so what I did with that is once I saw that it was working better to bring them to the Facebook page, I just bring them to the Facebook page and then I might do a Facebook Live or I might do a special promotion using a boost from the page instead of a separate ad to say, I'm having an event where I want couples to come together so we can talk about how to communicate better throughout your relationship life. And this way, it's this time, this date, it's a regular invitation or flyer that they're seeing, and they can go directly there to register. I don't have to talk to them again. They just register and show up at the door, which is great. If I'm selling a product like a book, they can. I have a page where they can just go to the book, and they can decide they're going to buy that. But I bring them from my Facebook page to my website page where I bring the information from the website onto the Facebook page with a link back. I found that to be most effective for me. The other thing is when I'm speaking in another town, like I was speaking in Niagara Falls, Canada with a colleague of mine who's a psychotherapist and I could target all of my ads to go out to that area within a 50 mile radius 
And there were all sorts of people coming in to say, oh, I've been following your page. I was like, whoa, I was, I didn't even know. I was really kind of doing it for her because that was her area. But I got people who had been following me in Canada and in Buffalo, New York, who came out to see my event in Canada. Woohoo! <laughs> it was great. Wow, this is great. And you know what, too, Valda, and we were talking about this before when it's a record mode, this opens so many opportunities for you. I mean, you have 264,000 fans. So some of these opportunities include really calling sponsors because you said you called sponsors before when you had 800 fans and they weren't interested nah. no, what they, <laughs> they were saying like <laughs> when, I, when i only had 800 and i went to a publicity summit and i talked to about 60 different publishers people who were over the view and meredith vieira show and they were like yeah yes yeah, cute but it's not special we want people who already have a tribe who already have a following because right now, well, at 800 people, they would say, well, so what if you get 10% of your people, you get 80 people to watch, who cares? But if I can say, I have 260,000 people, which it'll be 400,000 by the beginning of the year. So if I'm going to say, look, I have nearly half a million followers, they will say, Ooh, well, if we get 10% of your people, that would mean we'll have 40,000 or 50,000 people watching just because you said you were going to be on the show. And I can really see it when I do radio and I'll send people to my page. I am flooded. One time I accidentally gave up my phone number. Oh my God. <laughs> I, I just took the battery out after a while. You know, I couldn't even, I didn't even want to get it. And then I, I took about a week answering phone calls from people. Um, so now I have another strategy for that. But that's how much I got. I'm telling people I'll be on the radio at 7 a.m. to 8 a.m. on Sunday morning. So please call in and give me your questions. And so what happened from there, what start off, started off as just a little tiny thing, ended up where now the radio station has had me on for a year and a half because I boost what's going on with them. They get such a big bump in that Sunday morning spot, which is like, who's listening to radio, 7 a.m.? But this is a hip hop and R&B station, which brought me into another group of people who are younger than I expected to have in my group. But they're my most ardent followers. Yeah, because they want to talk about sex. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they're still just as confused and just as ashamed and just as shy as the rest of us. And what I love, too, you mentioned earlier um, during our pre-conversation that your Facebook page folks really drive your content. You know, because they, they give you the questions. You can tell which ones are getting more likes. So, for yeah. example, if one thing gets, say, I don't know, 200,000 likes or 50,000 likes, then that turns into a webinar easily. Exactly. Now you know what people want, right? Right. So, for example, I'll, I'll put out a simple question like, what is it that you want me to talk about? And people responded. So, I put that out last night, and there were about... I think 9,000 people who paid attention to that in 24 hours or no 13,000. It doesn't matter. The point is that when they do that, someone may go in and speak to that person who, if they're saying, I want to know more about how to approach a girl the first time, or I'm a senior newly widowed woman. How can I be sure that a predator won't be stalking me? And the ones that people like, they will go on and they will say, yes, I want to know more about this. I want to know. So I know which ones I should prioritize. Also, I have the direct message thing. So if someone sends me a question on a private message and they say, I am Jewish and I'm in love with a Muslim and I know our families are going to have a fit. What should I do about it? or if it's something country specific, because I'm in about 20 countries, I will say, I don't know, but is it okay for me to put it out for people to respond? And I will say they're in this country, but I'll take out all the identifiers. That way they can ask a question and remain anonymous, but get the information from a lot of people. So I've gotten 500 responses, a thousand responses to certain things. And it wears me out trying to look at them and monitor them and make sure the drawback is, of course, when you get so many and you have to pay so much attention. And there are always people who do stuff like put their business ads out there or try to sneak on something that is just unreasonable or ridiculous. So I have to monitor that. So I'm at the point where I definitely have to get a crew to help me. Um, 
and I've started doing that. Oh, good. Yes, we're working on that one. Now, I want to know how much time, because of course this comes to the mind of everybody that's listening. First of all, we're inspired. We're thinking, yes, I'm taking all these notes. But about how much time is this taking out of your schedule on a daily basis or even a week? Well, i tell you what I do. I set up my posts in advance. If any of you have used Facebook, know that you can schedule them out. Mm -hmm. Because I was at a conference for several days and I knew I did I wouldn't be able to put new content up. I went on and scheduled about six posts to go out at different times. By now I kind of know which ones are going to generate a ton of response. And I don't want that when I'm busy. So I would just put up something that says, I won't be here for the next 24 hours, but please just talk to each other. And for those of you who really know what you're talking about, you tell the others. Now, I'm going to be monitoring you, so make sure you're giving good advice. And there are some who really, really know, and there are some clinical people on here. And there's one, one registered nurse that I can say, look, I'm going to be super busy. Will you monitor this for me? But the main thing is just let them guide you. As you said, the more they ask me about something, the question of, is virginity important in this day and time? Now. I didn't think that would be a big deal. Ooh, was I wrong? <laughs> it's like, okay, okay, okay. Or any, it can be very simple, but most of mine is about relationships. I'm in a long distance relationship. How do I make it work? It's not even so much about the sex, but about how to have a good, warm, nurturing relationship. And I have to be willing to do that. But let me tell you about the time. What I do is I go to really good sites I look for the experts, like Esther Perel is like the top relationship person right now. She's phenomenal. And, or to WebMD or the Mayo Clinic website, and I give them information and the link to get there. So I'm a bit of an archivist at that. Mm -hmm. And now I'm going to bring in a couple people who will also be guest hosting, basically, on some Facebook Live posts. But that's how I do it. How much time does it take me? It can take me. If I'm not careful, it can take me four or five hours a day. Mm -hmm. But that's when I've hit that gold mine thing where they're having 500 responses. But that's why I'm trying now to get in a tribe, to get a, a, a tribe of people who help me. Because some of that is just going on and still saying that I like the fact, just liking it. And anyone can go on and say they like it, but they need to know enough about what not to say they like. So if someone is saying, just kill yourself, fool. Yeah, we don't want anyone liking that and encouraging that kind of behavior. But I, I have a few people who are already sex educators who can go on and do that part and let me know the ones I need to pay attention to. Mm -hmm. So I, I believe I can get down to about an hour a day. Well, first of all, congratulations. I mean, that is a huge thing. And one of the NSA groups, I saw you post that. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, I got to get her in Speaker Magazine. And uh, you're also going to do a webinar for a couple of the uh, community groups. So we appreciate you. This is what makes our community so powerful. I just love, love, it's my passion, talking to fellow speakerpreneurs that are doing it out there. So, guys, you've heard it. You've met the modern-day Dr. Ruth, <laughs> uh, younger, prettier, all that beautiful stuff. It's called chocolate version. Hello, hello, <laughs> say it now. And uh, Valda Ford, again, a registered nurse, educator. Uh, sex is not for sissies. Guys, go to her page, check it out. Become her fan so you can see what she does. And I love your tagline, where great sex and safe sex comes together. Thank um, you. From provocative talk to just real down educational talk. In case you didn't know, Valda speaks in she has spoken in 40 countries. So if you're thinking, I want to bring her to our summit, I want to bring her here to talk, she's available because this is wonderful. Any last piece of advice you want to leave for your fellow speakers that they can now go to their fan page and get just as much activity as you have? Yeah. Be genuine and be consistent. That is what's most important. Don't get them started thinking that you're going to talk to them and then disappear. Mm -hmm. So just be consistent and put out a few videos, they love to see your face. Oh, wonderful. Thank you, Valda. Thank, Thank you, guys. You. Until next time, this is the Speakerpreneur Show with Marquesa Petway. Bye, y'all. Bye-bye.